Good morning, everybody, and welcome to part three of the Pokemon Gold walkthrough. Now, as you can see off camera, I went and caught myself a little bell sprout. No, he is not going to be for the use of the team. Instead, I'm going to be showcasing a trade that you can make in this game early on. You come over to this house to talk to this kid, and he trades an Onyx for one of your bell sprouts, and I just figured I'd showcase it to show kind of the flaws as far as some trading can go. Um, one thing I haven't talked about um, in the past episodes I really should have by now is talking about um, s um, stat attacks, and when we actually get to the next battle, I'll, t I'll go more into that. And another thing to note is that I have not done any grinding ever since the last video. Both my Pokemon are still level 10. First thing we're going to head up to is going to be the Sprout Tower inside Violet City with the first gym leader as well. No grass patches around here. You can go to the left side of the gym and talk to a teacher. He'll take you to his school area and teach you about you know different kinds of attacks, different um, types of Pokemon that are out there. It's mainly like a beginner's thing. And what I'm going to showcase here, one of the bigger flaws about trading, as you can see, the Onyx I got here, its name is Rocky. You see, when you trade in the game or with another player, whatever the name is for that Pokemon is what it is when you get it and it sticks that way. Even if you go up to the guy that can rename the Pokemon, you cannot change it because, you know, trade Pokemon stay the same. Now, as you can see to the right of the Sprout Tower, there's a little bit of water there. It's the only place where you can actually catch the Pokemon in Violet City other than Sprout Tower itself. In the water area, when you get an old fishing rod, which you will be getting in the next part, you can go back and fish for some Magikarps and some Poliwags. The Poliwags, of course, are the rare get, only about a 15% chance, and the rest go to getting a Magikarp. So if you want a Gyarados, you can go for it, or if you want a Poliwag to go into a Poliworld and a Poliwrath, you can go get that as well. The other area that you can catch Pokemon is what we're in, the Bellsprout Tower. Since I'm recording this during the daytime, all you have, all I have really is a 100% chance of running into a Rattata, however, I do not run into any Rattatas in this part. Um... But like I said, during the morning and the afternoon, all you can run into are Rattatas. However, if you are in the Sprout Tower at nighttime, you only have a 15% chance of getting Rattata, and the other 85% chance goes to getting a Ghastly. So if you want to get a Ghost-type early on, come over to Sprout Tower at night, and you're going to be running into one eventually, which is actually a pretty damn good get for the beginning of this game. I'm not exactly sure when it is you're able to even get... Um, actually, no, I do. It's like about a good halfway through the game of the first generation, you can actually get yourself your first ghastly but you can get it here um i of course am not going to mainly because in order to get gengar you need to trade with the player in order to get in since i cannot trade and don't feel like doing the emulator trick to trade it i'm not gonna be getting one and i'm i don't really use ghost type anyways i'm more of a psychic type user though i do know that ghastly is a pretty damn good get because gengar is pretty good so anyways, Sprout Tower, majority of it is, obviously, you're going to be fighting a lot of guys that have Bell Sprouts, and as you can see, the video audio is a little bit laggy, again, it's the game, I did virtual dub, and you'll be able to notice that when we get to the end of the video, that it actually syncs up perfectly then, so I'm not exactly sure what it is that causes the lag between the video and the audio, even with virtual dub, you know, but it's nothing too terrible. But as I said, all we're going to be doing is going against Bell Sprout. You know, you, tip, you pick a Cyndaquil like I did, and even how the Pidgey that you get, you know, grass type moves are not going to work on it very well, so there's nothing really to worry about, unfortunately. Since we're only level 10, we haven't learned Ember yet, which we get around level 12, so it's a little long until we actually get move, a move that can actually take care of them. I could use Gust, but I wanted to get Cyndaquil leveled up to level 12 to deliver Ember before doing this, so, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. Um, uh, let me see here. There are some items that you can get around here. If you are playing the Crystal version, you know what, actually it's weird because you can even still get the Paralyzed Heal even in the Gold and Silver version. It's not just Crystal, and so that's, I don't know, because supposedly in Strategy Guys it tells you that only Paralyzed Heal you can get in the Crystal version, but you can even, I, as you just saw earlier in this video, I just got one. And yes, I am using a Strategy Guide for this walkthrough. Um, 
I played this game many times, I know where everything is, however, as far as hidden items goes, I'm not exactly too sure on, so I do need to use a strategy guide to find all the hidden items, not to mention the fact that I need the strategy guide to know, so I can tell everyone what you can find in certain areas and the percentages of finding them. Um, second floor here, you can get yourself an X defend. Why they call it the second floor, I'm not exactly sure, because technically this is the first floor, you know, if you really want to go about it realistically, but, you know, some people are like, ah, shut up, <laughs> who gives a shit anyways, another bell sprout fight going on here, um, in the middle of this, no nothing to talk about, I think I might as well just state that, good news for me, as of late, I finally got myself a job just yesterday, which is really good for me, because I've been out of one for the past couple years, and I've been a broke little complete son of a bitch here. And now that I've finally got myself a job, I can finally get some money raking in. Finally be able to support myself the way I've been wanting to for a while now. Because, you know, college, it takes so much money out of you. And then, you know, when you go out to try and get something, you don't have as much time for it. But I was finally able to get something, and, you know, now I'm finally going to get some money rolling in so I can get some stuff that I want to get. I've been meaning to get a new not a recording system. I like the microphone that I'm using now for these walkthroughs, but as far as doing more professional voice act over things, I need to get a better microphone for it. There's a contest coming up in June called Act Your Voice Out, and I'm going to use that as an opportunity to make a demo reel, not only for the contest, but a demo reel that I can send to all sorts of um, agencies so that you know I can get this voice acting career started off with, if that's indeed the path I end up taking. Obviously, it's one that I'm really interested in. There's a lot of other paths I plan on taking in the future, but that's one of the main ones. And so, you know, hopefully we'll get that rolling pretty soon. But we finally got ourselves Ember. And so for the third um, part of this tower, I will be using Pidgey for the rest of it. Just for the hell of it, just to get a few more levels. I try and keep my Pokemon within same levels of themselves, or at least close enough. Um, I, I try and add some balance, and I try not to make sure one's more overpowered than the other, because you never know when you're going to need them at certain times. Um, this is the final floor, of course, so you know, one final stretch. You got Bellsprout level 6, one of the higher ones to go against. Still nothing too big to worry about. Use Gust Attack, obviously, as you can see, took it out, one hit. whoop de doo move on to the next person sort of thing. Um, as far as um, status um, attacks goes, um... You probably saw some of them in my past ones, such as Leer, Growl, Smokescreen, all those. Those are attacks that don't necessarily, you know, hurt your opponent, other than the fact that it lowers certain stats, such as Leer will lower a Pokemon's defense, I believe it's one point, and obviously when you attack it, it'll be able to take um, more damage from it. Ones like Growl lower one opponent's in attack, so then they don't hurt you as much. Smoke screen and um, sand attack and the likes for accuracy so they don't hit you as much. Which, from what I've gathered, usually when it comes to accuracy type moves, you know, you do it once, it works just, it, it'll be like one in every ten shots they'll miss. However, when you do it a second time, that seems to be the best. I've found it, and this is just me, I don't know if this is how it works for other people, but when it comes to games that I do, I noticed that when it comes to accuracy type um, status effects, you doing it, doing the attack twice, like doing sand attack twice, will have the most effect. Doing it any more, and the effects of it kind of lower a bit, unless you do it to the maximum. But for some reason, whenever I'm playing, if I only have to do it twice, or if it's done twice on me, my chances of hitting them are extremely rare. And like I said, I'm not exactly sure. It might just be me, you know. Maybe I'm the only one that's affected by something like this. And for other people, it doesn't do that. It takes more of them to actually affect them. But for me, you know, two shots, and that's about it. I do up to three or four shots, and they'll start hitting me again. But if I just make it a two, then they won't hit me as much. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm, I find it kind of fascinating. As we can see with this Sage here, he does have himself a little bit of a hoot hoot. I don't think this Hoot Hoot showcased it, so I'm waiting for the next one to see if he does. But the Hoot Hoots that these Sages have that you can... And there's a certain move that they have that's actually a pretty damn good move, but they do it in the stupidest way, and I'll showcase in a bit. Some of you already know what I'm talking about, but we'll wait till we get to it. As we can see, our rival here just took out the Sage. He just now got the HM Flash, you know, just for the fuck of it. Um... At some pit, you know, at first, you know, you're thinking, oh shit, now I gotta fight this guy. 
But no, he doesn't. He just talks about how he cares less about weak Pokemon, how only strong Pokemon are good, and he pussies out and leaves us. We're gonna grab our escape rope here, which I do not use for reasons I will explain in the next video, because I was saving it for something. Again, some of you might already know what I'm talking about. I was saving the escape rope for a certain point, only to find out that it's not in Gold and Silver, and that's only in the Crystal versions, and then the 4th generation Heart Gold Soul Silver. But now we're going against the Master Sage. He has a Bell Sprout level 7, and I think a uh, Hoot Hoot level either, I think it's like level 8, 9, or 10. I'm not sure if he has another Bell Sprout in the mix. It's still a pretty damn easy fight. Like right, right there, doing the growth. You know, that was more of a self use status one where it's special attack rose, and if it did a special attack, it'd do more damage. However, I find that kind of stupid. Because then the fact that the only attack that it really has is a Vine Whip, and that's a physical attack, not a special attack, so therefore it wouldn't do anything. Alright, so we have a Hoot Hoot level 10, and I do believe this is where it does the move. Okay, well there's Growl, you know, one of the um, attack status um, ailment attacks, and obviously I'm not going to be able to hurt it as much. But, you know, here we go, Foresight. Okay, this is a pretty damn good move, however they do it, stupidly. As you can see, it says, Hoot Hoot identified Pidgey. What Foresight does, some people do not know this. If it... If it's used on a ghost Pokemon, it will allow normal type moves to be used on ghosts. You know, and for those of you who do not know, obviously you don't know enough about Pokemon, obviously. But normal attacks do not affect ghosts, however, with the move of Foresight, you will be able to have normal attacks hit ghost types. Which even showcases why it's so stupid that the Hoot Hoot used it on my Pidgey, because obviously Pidgey is not a ghost type. It is a flying normal type, and doing Foresight on it will have no effect. What the hell are you thinking? One of the main problems with Pokemon games is that usually the AI is completely stupid. They'll have them do moves that don't make sense to use in certain areas, and then in some cases, it doesn't even make sense for them to have certain moves to begin with. Like, you know, your main rival will still have moves like Growl and Tackle in the final battle when there are so many more moves that you can get, either through TM, HM, or whatever to use. But anyways, um, instead of using the escape rope, I just jump cut to the point where I got out of the Sprout Tower and we're going straight to the gym leader. No need to go into the... Poke Center, because since Cyntaquil hasn't taken any damage, I think I used one potion on him for the hell of it, you know. He's perfect enough to go against this one, because again, the um, the Gym Leader Falconer has a level 7 and a level 9, not really that big of a threat to go to. Even this guy here has a level 9, and you know, the fact that the Gym Leader has the exact same level isn't really that good. Um, they do fix that. I'm not sure if they fix it in Crystal version, but they do fix it in the Future games, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, where I do believe it's a level 10 and a level 12 instead, which is even not that much more challenging, but it's still a lot better than going against level 7 and a level 9. So we took care of that guy in his Sparrow again. Um, back on the first route that you were on, um, you can go up to Route 46. You'll be able to get a Sparrow of yourself if you really want a Sparrow or a Pharaoh instead of a Pidgey, you know, something to something you can teach a fly to so you can move around. It's, it's a hell of a lot easier in this game. Going against this one guy, he's got two level 7 Pidgeys. Ember, pretty damn useful against it. Not super effective, but it is a it is a very strong attack. Also, with Ember, you can also get the chance to burn your opponents. And the thing about burning an opponent, or even yourself being burned, there's something that most people don't know about it. When you are burnt, your attack stat goes down. I'm not sure if the special attack also goes down. I think it's just physical attack goes down. So moves like tackle and whatnot, you know, physical attacks aren't going to do as much damage. It's just the same thing as being attacked by Growl, except for you're constantly being hurt by it as you go on with the fight, which is something that I didn't even know for a while um, until reading up on the strategy guide, and it's like, yep, fire um, being burnt causes um, whoever's burnt to have their attack being lowered, so that's that's pretty damn good. Alright, here we go. First gym leader, Falconer. Violet C, gym leader. According to the Magna, he used to be a police officer before becoming a gym leader. And in that one, he has a Skarmory, you know? So again, the Magna does pretty damn good with what certain gym leaders have what, and again, check out the Pokemon Adventure Magna, you know, you you won't be disappointed, it's damn good. 
So here we go, PG level 7, and it's gonna surprise me here in a second. Use Ember on it, everything's fine and good, same just as the last guy, level 7, should be able to do pretty damn good, and we end up burning it so it's tax gonna go down, and then it hits me with Mud Slap. Mud Slap is a dual type thing. It dan it's a ground type, okay, since I'm using a fire type, you know, that kind of hurts. But, not only does it do damage, it's not a very strong attack, but it does damage, and at the same time lowers the accuracy. So it's like saying attack, but it does damage. And here you have Pidgeotto. Now the reason why it took me by surprise is that I only thought Pidgeotto learned Mud Slap. I did not know that his first Pidgey actually learned it too. And now I know. And for whatever reason, Pidgeotto does not use Mud Slap because if they would hit me the second time, I would have never been able to hit it <laughs> for the life of me. Since it didn't, one last Ember, and the Gym Leader is already done. It's just another Brock. And again, since this is not one of the future games, the Gym Leaders do not call you back for a rematch, so this is all you get. And even in the rematch in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, it is not even that much harder. But as we can see, level 14, Cyntaquil will evolve into Kui Lava. I believe Cyntaquil evolves. Obviously, Cyntaquil evolves level 14. Um, I think Totodile is at level 18 when it goes into Krokna. And then um, Chikorita at level 16 going into Bayleaf. So there you go. Th those are all the starters and what levels they need to be to evolve the very first time. So now since we beat the gym leader, we get a couple of things. For one thing, we get the Zephyr Badge, which apparently raises the attack of Pokemon. I hear this is completely fake, and I believe that it is, you know. I've never seen it actually do anything. Because we beat the gym leader, we are now able to use Flash outside of battles. I'm not exactly sure what keeps us from using Flash in the first place, other than, you know, the game trying to slow us down from going too far ahead of ourselves, but in real life, what's to stop your Pokemon from using Flash outside of battle? And also, he gives you Mud Slap that I used on my Pidgey, because, you know, Quilavar has Smokescreen, and Pidgey will get more of an effect out of it, um, just because I actually do keep it on him throughout the rest of the game. Walk outside, Professor Elm's gonna call you, let you know that the Mystery Egg, there's something special about it, you need to go over to the Poke Center, talk to his assistant in order to get it, and the video's already wrapped up, but I figured I'd get that out of the way, catch you guys next time.